most people would not expect that when you put a child in a sport at four years old, that it is something they will do for the rest of their life. This, however, is a common occurrence in the world of figure skating. Figure skating is freeing. It is movement, artistry, hard work, and perseverance. It's easy, right? You just have to stand on four millimeter blades, throw your body into the air, and land on one foot with more than five times your body weight. Right. Even after 18 years of experience, this is never easy. Yet, despite this physical challenge, at no point in my adolescent life did I consider myself an athlete. Athletes play a game. They're on teams. And as far as I knew, there were no such thing as teams in figure skating. This turned out to be far from the truth. In 1956, the first synchronized figure skating team was formed in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Synchro is the most popular branch of skating you have never heard of. With the upcoming Olympics, people will start talking about figure skating again, but synchro gets little media attention and is not yet an Olympic sport. At age nine, I joined my first team, physically connected to 15 other skaters, performing in unison in a combination of all divisions of skating. Becoming a synchronized figure skater is what challenged me to call myself an athlete. The pinnacle of most sports occurs in one day. Whether it be the World Championships, Super Bowl, or Olympics, one day can define an athlete's successes and failures. We know that in reality, success can be defined in a number of ways. We all set goals, and for some, these goals remain the same throughout a lifetime. When we set goals, it can be easy to set a path that you must follow to achieve them. Yet, Throughout history, it's hard to pinpoint two individuals that arrived at the same destination in the same way. Maybe this means the only true way to achieve our goals is to throw out this so-called path to success and get there on our own terms. My sophomore year of college, I was immensely distracted by a goal I had abandoned, to compete at the elite level of synchronized skating. I sought a change and decided to take a year off of school to fully immerse myself in this goal. After the spring audition process, I was named as a member of Team USA with the Crystalettes in Dearborn, Michigan. This is what I always wanted, to be valued as a skilled skater and to be a part of a group that cared about the advancement of our sport. Like many teams, only 16 skaters are on the ice at one time leaving four members at the sidelines at every given competition. My goal for the season was to not sit at the sidelines, but to be a performing member of this team, and above all, be valued as an asset to our overall success. No doubt, training with Team USA is hard work. I was thrilled by the challenges it posed to my strength, endurance, and flexibility, always wanting to learn more. Until during summer training, I found myself in the emergency room for the first time in my life. I had pleurisy and inflammation of the lungs, eventually diagnosed with asthma. But hiccups like this happen all the time. I wasn't defeated. I bundled up and I went to practice, and I sat there for four hours for one day. I was on the ice in no time and continued to excel and demonstrate growth. Until just three weeks later, after a minor fall, I had a fractured ankle. This, for a figure skater, is what we call devastating. I uprooted my life, moved hundreds of miles away, and broke the very thing that facilitated my goal. I was worried I'd lose my spot on the team. But it was only summer training. There were still plenty of weeks to get back on the ice in time for the season. So I committed to my recovery. I bundled up and I went to every practice for four hours a day for 70 days. Finally, a year ago on this very day, I would return to the ice. Adrenaline filled my veins and I wanted nothing more than to show my coaches and my teammates that I was ready, I could do this. Within 10 minutes of the warm up, after a collision with another skater, I had a Coley's fracture to my left wrist. 
Days later, I would have a plate and seven screws holding me together in more ways than one. My heart was broken. The years of commitment seemed worthless. I kept asking myself, why, what was it all for? Am I even good enough for this? Why am I still here? I need to go home. But I didn't go home. Not after the first ER visit, not after the second, so I wouldn't after the third. My entire perception around this goal had to change. It could no longer be about skating in the program every day, but just getting to the rink. So I remained committed to my team. I bundled up, I went to practice every day for four hours, totaling 140 days. <laughs> During this time, my mind was riddled with self-doubt. And when I returned to the ice, I questioned my ability every day. My head was wrapped around this idea that I had to perform. And for months, I battled with the fact that I may never perform. Only when I let go of my definition of success did I find the confidence to move forward. Success no longer meant performing at every competition, but just getting on the ice, no matter the outcome, and enjoying it. This is what I came for. This is what made me an athlete. Throughout the season, our coaches told us to remind ourselves of this. I am a member of my team. I rely on it, defer to it, and sacrifice for it, because the team, not the individual, is the ultimate champion. My team was thriving, learning from my struggles as much as I was learning from theirs. For the first time in history, the Crystalettes won a gold medal at the Dr. Porter Classic, and I was honored by standing on the podium. Later, we traveled to Berlin, Germany, and we received a bronze medal at the Berlin Cup. We followed this by traveling to Rouen, France, where we competed against some of the best teams in the world at the French Cup. And we continued our season at the US National Championships. We received a silver medal, garnering a spot as Team USA 2 at the ISU Ch World Championships in Colorado Springs. This was among one of the most driven teams in the world, placing ninth of 24 teams from 19 countries. There's a lot to be said by my actions last year. I had experienced the highest highs and lowest lows of an entire career. I was three times the skater I once was and had achieved goals that I didn't know I had. The World Championships was the Olympics of our sport and I never thought I would be there, much less after 140 days off the ice. For each failure, you succeed at something new, achieving a goal you may not know you had. Goals can change in the process of achieving them, and sometimes conquering defeat is the key to reaching your destination. Thank you.